Gentamicin is an immunoglycoside antibiotic. We use it in the empiric and directed management of neonatal infections. I'm Dr. Susanna Franco, a neonatal and pediatric clinical pharmacist. I love researching and teaching complex pharmacology concepts to all levels of learners. In this video, I'll teach you why we monitor gentamicin serum levels and how to do so most effectively. Gentamicin serum levels are monitored for a few reasons. I'll first discuss the big picture, and then I'll break it down into each component. The dose of gentamicin, with individual pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic factors, determine the bactericidal or bacterial killing effectiveness of gentamicin, which then determines the clinical outcome. Pharmacokinetics describe how body processes affect a drug in four main phases. First is absorption, and this is determined by multiple factors in neonates, such as the acidity of the drug in stomach acid, intestinal motility, and blood flow. Next is distribution, determined by a drug's volume of distribution and protein binding, as well as a neonate's percentage of total body water and body fat. Third is metabolism, determined by the maturity of metabolic processes, enzymes, and drug reactions. And finally, elimination, which depends mainly on glomerular filtration in neonates, and to a lesser extent, tubular excretion and reabsorption, because these processes take about two years to mature. We administer gentamicin intravenously, and it undergoes very little metabolism. So, distribution and elimination will be the most influential phases. Hydrophilic drugs have a low volume of distribution, meaning they will concentrate in the serum versus distribute into tissues. Lipophilic drugs will distribute into tissues versus the serum, and thus have a high volume of distribution. Gentamicin is a hydrophilic drug, and so it concentrates in the serum and therefore has a low volume of distribution. But neonates have a relatively high percentage of total body water compared to older infants, children, and adults. So gentamicin's volume of distribution in neonates will be higher as it will be more diluted at a similar dose per body weight. So in order to reach the necessary serum concentrations, neonates require a higher weight-based dose. Pharmacodynamics describe how a drug affects the body. For gentamicin, there are three major pharmacodynamic factors. First is the minimum inhibitory concentration, or MIC. This is the lowest concentration of an antibiotic that will inhibit a bacteria's growth. MICs define the clinical breakpoint of bug and drug combinations and describe the susceptibility of a bacteria to a given drug. E. coli, is gentamicin's primary target, and the MIC breakpoint of E. coli for gentamicin is 2 micrograms per ml. Second is kidney maturity, which determines gentamicin's elimination. And third is serum albumin level. This determines how much free drug is available for activity and also affects the volume of distribution. Elimination and free drug concentration are therefore dependent upon gestational age and postnatal age, as neonates, especially preterm neonates at the beginning of life, have immature kidneys and low albumin levels. This predisposes them to toxicity. Gentamicin elimination is mediated by the glomerular filtration rate, and so decreased elimination and accumulation of free drug in the tissues can cause nephrotoxicity and autotoxicity. This is why we utilize extended interval dosing for gentamicin in neonates. Pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic factors vary from one neonate to another, and so we can optimize our dosing strategy and monitor gentamicin serum levels 
to decrease risk of side effects, increase bactericidal efficacy, and ultimately improve clinical outcomes. Antibiotic activity can be categorized into three pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic relationships of exposure and response. Fraction of time, or in other words, the percent of the dosing interval that a free drug concentration remains above the MIC, maximal free drug concentration reaching 10 times the MIC, and a combination of the two, the area under the concentration time curve over 24 hours divided by the MIC. Gentamicin has concentration-dependent activity. This means that the concentration in the serum needs to reach at least 10 times the MIC of the targeted bacteria for best effect. It doesn't matter for how long that concentration is maintained, only that it is reached. We don't usually monitor peak levels because they are not associated with toxicity. And we have enough pharmacokinetic data to say that a concentration of at least 10 times the MIC will be reached with our standard neonatal doses adjusted for gentamicin's higher volume of distribution. Instead, gentamicin monitoring focuses on preventing accumulation and combating the development of bacterial resistance. And so we monitor the trough which is the drug level just before a repeat dose is given. After we administer a dose, gentamicin will have great bactericidal action for several hours. As the level falls, the bacteria get smart and turn on or upregulate their efflux pumps to pump out the gentamicin from their cells. It's only when the level falls below the MIC breakpoint that the bacteria turn off their efflux pumps, which resensitizes the bacteria to gentamicin, meaning its activity then continues for many hours after the level falls below the MIC breakpoint. This is known as the post-antibiotic effect. Resensitizing the bacteria also ensures that the next dose has maximal bactericidal action. 94% of troughs remain above 2 micrograms per ml 24 hours after the first dose. So trough monitoring should begin right away, before the second dose is administered. We can utilize this extended activity after the trough falls below 2 to essentially prevent any accumulation. Ultimately, we want the trough to continue to fall below what we call the nephrotoxicity threshold, which is a serum level of one microgram per ml. So efficacy depends on the trough falling below the MIC breakpoint and minimizing toxicity depends on the trough falling below one. This is why our trough goal is less than one. Now, if you are sure you are only treating for a rule-out period, which is typically 36 to 48 hours, the neonate will only be exposed to one or two doses of gentamicin, and so levels would not significantly accumulate. You could consider sparing the neonate from the extra blood draw. But if you may treat beyond 48 hours, trough monitoring should be done after the first dose to improve efficacy and minimize toxicity. You may be wondering about steady state. This is a pharmacokinetic principle in which a consistent drug concentration is achieved after about four or five half-lives of the drug have lapsed, at which point the amount of drug being absorbed is equal to the amount being eliminated. With extended interval dosing, we are intentionally avoiding steady state, as we are not allowing gentamicin to accumulate significantly. For this reason, it is unnecessary to wait for half-lives to obtain a drug level, which is good because gentamicin's half-life can be as long as 14 hours in preterm neonates, and even longer if there is renal dysfunction. If the trough is greater than one, hold the dose and redraw the level in 12 hours. 
If the repeat trough is less than one, this is your new dosing interval. Keep the dosing interval at 24, 36, or 48 hours. This is because gentamicin exhibits first order kinetics. This means a change in dose will produce a proportional change in serum concentration. It also means that a constant proportion of drug is eliminated over time. But past a 48 hour interval, the pharmacokinetics are no longer predictable. And so the maximum interval for gentamicin is 48 hours. But we also want to maintain an extended interval of at least 24 hours, hence 24, 36, and 48 hours. If the trough is greater than one at 48 hours, decrease the dose by 20% and redraw a trough in another 48 hours. A 20% change in dose will theoretically produce a 20% change in the trough, but variability in pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics prevents the total reliability of this. So trough monitoring should continue until it is confirmed to be less than one. Continue gentamicin at this dose and interval and repeat the trough in one week or sooner if there are signs of acute kidney injury or the addition of another nephrotoxic medication such as indomethacin, ibuprofen, or amphotericin B as these scenarios will lead to a decrease in gentamicin's elimination and an increased risk of toxicity. Thank you for watching. All my references can be found in the video description. Please let me know in the comments what topic you'd like me to cover next.